but Ninja Turtles have been around for nearly 40 years. During that time, we've had many different versions, with my favourite one being the 2003 movie. Some people might say the reason for the success and the reason why it's so good is because of the action and also the storylines. While these are two things which I love about the show and makes it ever bit incredible, I do think that the reason why the show works so well is because of relationships. These relationships help move the characters and the story along, leading to the story being so good and then getting into the conflict with evil. Now throughout the show, these relationships are expanded upon and show off their strengths of each relationship with each character and has with one another. But the one that I'll be talking about today to show off how these relationships improve the show is Leonardo and Raphael. Most versions of the relationship is basically Raph arguing with Leo about everything he does if it's not how he would do it. Training to be a better leader for you! Why do you hate me for that? And whoever said I wanted to be led? I'm better off calling my own shots now. Get used to it. You aren't ready. You're impatient and hot-tempered, and more importantly, I'm better than you. We'll take Snakeweed from above, tie him up in the clotheslines, and we have to stop Snakeweed now. I mean, he's kidnapping people. Uh, we take him from above. While well, the 2003 show, it changed, and Raph would follow all his commands into every mission. Run away. That ain't my style. Call it a tactical retreat. Let's move. A tactical retreat. I can live with that. I would only argue when Raph had a good point to make and would leave a view undecisive on who was right and who was wrong. Those are all bad guys down there! But it's not right! Right or wrong, it's not a fight! I'm not too sure about that. Throughout the course of the first season, we would see their relationship with one another while also showing off their personalities. Raph was the hothead one who showed that he did care about his brothers, but would should not show it too well. Mikey, come on, bro. No. Oh, please, Mikey, say something. I guess I'm lucky he didn't give me mouth to mouth. Uh, he's fine. He would build walls around himself to protect the people closer to him so they will not get hurt, also that he does not reveal how bad his anger problems are. Meanwhile, we have Leonardo who is always training, trying to improve himself, and is always looking out for his brothers because he has to carry around the responsibility for their life. So a few times during season 1, we would sometimes see the two at odds with each other, but it's not until episode 19 that we truly see how relationships are the main reason why this show works so well. So episode 17, we see Leonardo training alone on route tours, but then he's chased across the city, taking down wave after wave of foot ninjas. When he's at his weakest, he still needs to keep going, because unfortunately he has to guard against some of the most skilled uh, ninjas in Shredder's army. But he must keep going, as he can't leave them at Rapel's apartment and be the reason for their deaths. Meanwhile, back at April's apartment, everyone starts to get worried about Leo's whereabouts, but Raph is most concerned, and he's the first one who wants Leo's back. But Leo is returned to them, nearly beaten to death, and Raph's first reaction is to go make the people who did this pay. During episode 18, we see more relationships get developed, and that in a way has all been uh, building up to this. Such as Leo telling Leo that they are now family, or how Leo's li the first line is that he needs his sword so that he can rejoin the battle to protect them one final time from the mistake that he made. Further in the episode, we see Han's relationship with Shredder being shown, with Han learning from Shredder's tactics and trying to take out the weakest member of the team, with another relationship being shown with Casey protecting April despite their differences they've had up till now. So when in episode 19 comes around, Raffi Nunga says that he doesn't need him before he finally breaks down. He opens up about how the time he saved him and feels that he wanted to be the leader. When his story is finished, he doesn't know why he told that story, but it was the one that meant the most to him and in a way has changed his life forever. Uh, I don't even know why I told you that story. I, I guess you just... I mean, what I'm trying to say is... Compared to what happened a few episodes before when Mikey could have died, he was concerned but not like this where he's the only child crying as he could have done something to prevent it, but now he must stand there and wait to see if Leonardo recovers from the attack or he will die. Luckily, Leo survives and Raph is the only one to say that if he needs anything, he'll be outside waiting for him. In the next episode, their bond increases with each passing scene. When Raph comes out into the barn, the first thought is that he's come to mock him, but instead Raph's main reason is to help him. And that is what they do, they rebuild his swords, and as a result, they in a way build Leo back to how he was. In the following episodes, the tells go back to the Shredder's Fortress and deal with him once and for all. Well, for now at least. But when they get to the top, they must face the foot elite again, and Leo's confidence is lowered as he can't fail his family again. But Raphael assures him by saying that Leo has this. Shredder's Elite Guard! You can do it, bro. 
We're all in this together. This gives Leo his confidence back to face them. Throughout the rest of the show, their relationship grows and moves the show in a better direction. In season 4, Raph is the first told to acknowledge Leo's pain and his struggles after their defeat from the Australian Exodus. This scene sums it all up. If Leo gets in trouble, I'm the first one in there. But right now... <laughs> It looks to me like Leo's got more than one monster to work out of his system. He knows he has problems and let him deal with it in his own way to get out of his system, but also will protect him in case anything goes wrong. Meanwhile, Leo is only fighting so extremely and aggressively to protect his brothers and Casey from the danger that Rat King possesses to them and to also make up for past mistakes. I think all of you should just lay off the poor guy. I mean, it can't be fun. Always being the responsible one, and we're the ones who really benefit. Raph's free not to think because Leo does all the thinking for him. Don's free to dream, and I'm free to take it easy. All because Leonardo is busy being responsible enough for all of us. But if we do look back at Exodus, we can see Raph looking out for Leo even more. Then Karai stabs Leo, Raph loses him, rages out and attacks Cry, and manages to beat her due to his feelings for Leo. However, this feeling for him also leads to his downfall, due to him being blinded by anger, he didn't see the shadow who knocked him out. But again, this is not the first time, as a few episodes prior, there was an episode set in the future, where Raph and Leo went their separate ways, but, um, but then got together one final time, taking on the shadow. But during their battle, Leo dies, and Raph once again rages out and attacks Christ, but this time, things are, are different. He's losing, but he gets up every time to get revenge, but fate had different plans, and he dies. But during his death, he calls out for Leo and not Mikey, who died earlier. He calls over to him, regretting the time that he spent apart, while also showing that he needs his protection again. With him falling into his arms, he gives the protection that he needs to live. This scene has so many similarities to Exodus, with some scenes being identical to one in Exodus. Leo! No! no! Is this truly their fate? So, you can clearly see that the relationship between the two characters, even to the story and action scenes, being so well diverged due to their relationship. With the characters' bond being so prominent here, it leads to some of the best moments in the episode and in the total franchise that it has to offer. Not to mention, it makes these episodes that are spoken about even more emotional and stand out even much better with their relationship. If there's one thing I want you to leave with, is that why is your favourite episode so good to you? Is it because of the story and the action? Or is it because of the relationship that makes the story and action? If your answer was the first option, then I'm sorry for wasting your time. But anyway, I'd like to say thank you for watching a happy anniversary to the 2003 show. And next year will be the year that it turns 20. So yeah, good bye yo. Bye.